When a netball player scores a goal, or a soccer player kicks a ball, the ball moves in a specific way and we call this projectile movement. Any object projected upwards moves in this way. It can be a tennis ball being hit upwards, it can be a bullet, or even a spear. In real life, friction would have an effect on the objects being observed, but for the purpose of what we are doing, we are leaving out friction. When a rocket is being propelled upwards, a force works against it. This force is gravitational force, and when it stops burning, it will experience free fall. در هنگام اصابت هدف را تا شعای گستردهی کاملا منحدم می کند. In the absence of friction, objects will fall at a constant velocity of 9.8 meters per second. For Earth, we call this gravitational velocity, and it's represented by symbol G. Think, for example, of a parachute jumper. He will move slower than gravitational force because of friction. If you want to understand what happens to a ball if it's thrown directly upwards, we can use an example of a biker hitting his brakes. Let's say he's moving at 300 kilometers an hour and brakes within 4 seconds. Take his direction of movement as positive, then you'll see that his brakes has a negative velocity in the opposite direction. The same will happen with the ball if you throw directly upwards, and this we call projectile movement. The only difference is that the ball's velocity would decrease to 9.8 meters per second. We should use fundamental units, so 300 kilometers an hour, so it's 300 times 1000 meters divided by 3600 seconds. To get the negative acceleration, we should work out A, which is equal to the change in velocity on the change of time. The negative acceleration is therefore minus 20 meters per second. In the pictures we see two-dimensional projectile movements as examples. If an object goes up and down as well as forward, it has a horizontal and vertical component. So two-dimensional projectile movement differs from vertical projectile movement in the sense that it has an angle and we use trigonometric rules to work it out. Pythagoras says that r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. These are the trigonometric rules and sine equals y on r cos equals x on r and tan equals y on x. Cosec second cot is just the opposite. The cos rule states that a square equals b square plus c square minus 2bc multiplied by cos of capital A. The sinus rule on the other hand says that a on sine a equals b on sine b equals c on sine c and the opposite is also true. If we look at collusions, the following is very relevant. Momentum is sometimes conserved and it's the product of a object's mass and velocity. It's a vector, kinetic energy is also conserved, the equation a half mv squared describes it, and then it's also represented as an elastic collusion. The law of the conservation of momentum says that total linear momentum in a closed system should stay constant. Linear momentum is then momentum in a straight line, and a closed system is a system where no external forces are applied. An example of such an unbalanced force is friction. We can use trigonometry to work out when cars collide at an angle. If they separate off the collusion like in the video, we have starting velocities u1 and u2, a mass 1 and a mass 2, and we apply the circled formula. After the collusion, they move away from each other at a certain velocity. We then get the formula m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equals m1 v1 plus m2 v2. If they do not separate after the collusion, their velocities would obviously be the same, so we can add them up and multiply them by the speed. They were soon to find out. The bomb went off, the whole inside of the airplane just lit up as if someone had set off a flashbulb. And then we had to wait, and this was our big worry, is what would the blast do when the blast got to the airplane? And finally the blast did arrive, it was like being in an ash can and getting someone kicking. And then we uh, crowded to the window, and uh, saw uh, just the whole city completely covered in smoke with this very 
tall mushroom cloud rising from it. If we look at cases like bullets and explosions, the total momentum at the beginning would be zero. So we would be able to derive the formula m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2 equals zero. An impulse is the change in momentum and it's defined by the product of force and time. The resulting force times the change in time is the change in momentum. This is therefore equal to mv minus mu, where mv is after the collision and mu is before the collision. Let's say you hit a cricket ball, then your resulting force would be mv minus mu, divided by change in time. Let's say you have a boat in the ocean and there's a sea current pushing it in this direction. Then it would have a resulting force as shown in the figure. Just remember that the current pushes the boat in this direction. We can then use sinus or cosinus or Pythagoras to work out either the resulting distance or the angle or whichever might be the case. It all depends on the information provided.